Hello guys, my name is Tom Antos and in this video I'm going to be testing out a whole bunch of filters uh, with the Ursa mini camera, which I have right, right here. Uh, this is the, with the 4.6K, uh, but this is also going to apply to, to the other, the 4K version or pretty much any other camera out there that uh, does not have a, a built-in IR uh, filter, which is an infrared light filter. Now most cameras these days do have uh, some sort of a filter that will black the infrared light. A lot of cameras have a built-in low-pass filter, which will also black uh, infrared light. Now, what is infrared light? Very quickly, it's basically uh, light that's outside of the visible light spectrum, meaning you know we human beings can't see it. Uh, it you know it's a red sort of a closer to the red, red sort of color uh, spectrum. Uh, so it means that me and you are not normally going to see it, but when it enters the camera and you know and it basically hits the sensor the sensor can actually see that light, meaning it can actually turn your image and make it kind of look more reddish. Uh, especially it will affect your image in the sort of gray and black areas. Uh, so for all of my tests today, I'm going to be using this chart. So you kind of you can look at this chart and this way you can see what's happening with the colors. Uh, here on the, on the left side, you're going to have the 90% uh, white, then you have 60% gray and 4% black. So you'll, especially in these two, you're going to see uh, how the light, the, the color basically changes when, when we're introducing different filters. Uh, here in the middle, you have uh, sort of different uh, skin tone colors, and then here you have other sort of primary colors. So again, you can see what happens with all of those uh, as I'm changing the filters. Now, getting back to the whole IR pollution problem, uh, once again, it's not all cameras that, that you know, are going to have it. Now, the cameras that do, uh, don't have the IR cut filter, um, like this, the, for example, the Ursa Mini uh, camera that I have here, uh, those ones, the, the problem is not really going to be noticeable unless you start basically blacking uh, certain wavelengths of light. So when you're outside you know, and you're filming, it's really bright, most of the time you want to be using an ND filter, which is basically just a standard you know, piece of glass, kind of like a, you could say sunglasses for your camera. Makes your image darker, reduces the amount of light entering the, and, and hitting the sensor. And that's all great, but you got to be aware of the fact that and a standard ND filter will just simply black the visible light, meaning the light that me and you can see. But since the camera can see more than that, that means that while it's blacking the visible light spectrum, the infrared light still happens to be entering. And so that means that then your whole image is going to start looking more and more red. So basically, if you're adding, you know, a stronger ND filters and you're blacking out more of the visible light, that's when the infrared light is going to be more visible also in your image. So that's why usually the problem uh, is not visible until you start putting in, you know, really strong ND filters. So first, let me just show you how the shot looks without any filters. And you can kind of see how the colors look. Uh, now this is just regular in-camera look, which is uh, just sort of regular Rec. 709. Uh, and then now I'm going to apply just a little color correction to kind of properly, you could say, balance the shot uh, because, you know, to basically adjust the white balance properly. Now I'm shooting all of this in 4.6K on the Ursa Mini uh, camera in, you know, pure raw, not, not compressed or anything like that. So that allows me to adjust the white balance later on. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put regular ND filters. These happen to be these filters that I have up here, which are the uh, Cavision ND filters. These are really great filters. Uh, that, that you can use with any camera and then they, they come in different sizes. The ones that I happen to have are 4x4 four four inches uh, or 100 millimeter by 100 millimeters. That's because the, my matte box comes with these uh, filter trays of that size. Now you can get these filters in different, different sizes. Uh, and what I love about these filters is that, you know, I've been using these for years and uh, they're the most affordable yet the best quality that you can get. Um, you know, they don't cost you somewhere around 60 to 80 dollars per filter uh, and they're made out of good quality glass and this will this test will basically just show you how uh, a camera you know that has an IR basically problem um, how it's going to behave with sort of your average ND filter and you know and again I'm going to go through the different strengths of the filters so you can kind of see progressively how you know the IR pollution problem gets you know uh, worse and worse the, the stronger the ND filters are. Um, now, the reason why I'm saying that, you know, this kind of represents an average, uh, you could say, ND filters, because all ND filters that do not cut, you know, uh, or stop the uh, infrared light uh, are going to behave the same way unless they're just made out of really bad quality glass or, you know, resin or kind of plastic kind of material. 
then some of those filter scans are introducing other colors simply because the, the glass itself or the material that they're made out of is bad quality. But if you're using anything out of good quality glass, like these filters, then they're all gonna behave the same. So I really don't see a point of it's basically spending, let's say, you know, 60 bucks on a filter like this versus, uh, you know, like some, for example, Schneider or some filter that will cost you, you know, a few hundred dollars. Uh, again, if you just need regular ND filters, I think this, these are a great brand. So anyways, here you can see me uh, just putting in the different strengths. Uh, and here is the 0 0.3. And you can start seeing a bit of the effect here. And then here's how it looks when you apply the color correction. Now here's that shot with uh, the 0 0.6 filter. And now here's the same shot with uh, 0 0.9. So it's definitely now at this uh, strength it starts getting, uh, you know, the IR pollution problems is becoming more no noticeable. And here is the 1.5 uh, strength. And definitely it's a lot more visible. So as you can see from the tests, uh, you know, like I was saying, the stronger the ND filter is going to be, then the, the more visible the IR pollution problem. Uh, so let's say if you already invested in a whole set of ND filters that you were using with some camera before, uh, and then you happen to get a camera like, let's say, the Ursa Mini now, and you want to use your ND filters with this camera, but, you know, again, it, you're having this IR pollution problem. Does that mean that you need to get rid of all your ND filters or, or buy a whole new set? Not necessarily. You can basically still use your ND filters, but you just need to put another filter in front of it uh, to uh, to black out the IR, you know, uh, or infrared light basically from entering. Uh, and you can do that by getting another filter from Cavision, which again, that's what it does. It's it's called a hot mirror filter. And hot mirror is, I, I think, is the best technology these days for cutting out the uh, infrared light. It literally has a, a little kind of mirror in between the two pieces of glass that will actually reflect any of the, the wavelengths of light, which are the infrared light. So it will stop it from, and it stops most of the infrared light from entering the camera. Um, so that means that I can use this filter now in conjunction with all of my other CavVision filters, uh, and I can save myself a lot of money because, like I said, the, each CavVision filter, uh, that regular ND is between $60, uh, $70. And then for this, you know, uh, hot, uh, hot mirror um, uh, filter, uh, depending again on the size that you'll get, but if you get the one that I have here, which is the 4x4 inches, it's going to cost you $145. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's definitely not as expensive as some other options out there. But anyways, I'm going to let you guys now see the test. So this is how um, the, the shot looks when, when I'm using the 0.3 ND filter in conjunction with the uh, hot mirror uh, uh, IR cut filter. And here on the left, you can kind of see how the shot uh, looked before without uh, basically with that same ND filter, but without the, the IR uh, cut filter. And here again, I'm just going to cycle through the, the different strength filters that I have. So as you can see, the, the hot mirror, you know, IR cutting filter uh, from CavVision uh, definitely does what it's, what's, what it's advertised to do. And it, I think, just gets rid of the problem. Uh, so that's, you know, it's a great thing to see. Uh, now, uh, if you're looking for other options out there, there's obviously way more, you know, a lot more expensive options, which I'm not even going to get into because sim simply because I want to make this video, you know, to people who don't really have a lot of money to spend on, uh, you know, uh, on fil filters. Uh, and would, would rather spend it on basically on your production value or what's in front of the camera. Uh, now, some other filters out there that are, I would say, still within a reasonable price range are from Tiffin. Uh, and these happen to be, uh, if, again, you can get just the regular ND filters or you can get the ones that will cut the, the infrared light pollution. Um, and these happen to be $288 per filter. 
Uh, and again, price might vary a little bit depending on where you get it. And once again, I'm gonna provide the links uh, in the description or on my website if you wanna find the different deals. Um, and these filters basically are, uh, the, the cool thing about them is that you have an ND filter and an IR cutting filter in one, meaning you no longer have to put uh, two filters in front of your camera, uh, which is, you know, might be a problem for some people. If, let's say you have a matte box that only has one filter uh, holder, or if you just simply don't like putting two filters, uh, then that's when uh, having an, an you know ND filter with an IR filter built into it um, is, is great. Now, the reason why I picked these filters also is because they're, they're the most affordable uh, I would say uh, ND filters from Tiffin that will also cut out the infrared light pollution uh, because you can get, for example, another set of ND filters from Tiffin uh, which are, are going to be using the same hot mirror technology to reflect the infrared light like, uh, like the, the one that I was showing you here from CatVision um, but those filters are going to cost you uh, close to $400 or you know, even uh, up to $500 per filter so for me personally, uh, I mean, I've used those filters once when I was renting them and they're great. They do an amazing job because, like I said, the hot mirror technology, I think, is the best way to, of, of getting rid of uh, infrared light pollution. But it's just uh, for me and I think for most indie filmmakers, it's, it's a little hard justifying, you know, spending $500 uh, on a filter, uh, on a piece of glass, basically. Uh, you know, when it, I think it's better to spend that kind of money on, on your production value in front of a camera. Uh, so these filters, these are the full spectrum uh, Tiffin IRND filters and they use different kind of basically way of, uh, of stopping the, the kind of basically, you could say they more absorb the infrared light as opposed to uh, reflecting it. Uh, they will not stop as much of the infrared light as the hot mirror technology. But again, I think the test will just kind of show you that um, it's not, it doesn't make a, as big of a difference. Now, one thing they will do is they'll introduce some other basically slight color shifts, which is not a problem if you're shooting, let's say, with a camera like this, uh, which shoots in RAW, and you can then easily adjust the white balance in your camera, which is something that you'll have to do. Um, so anyways, here's a test now using uh, the Tiffin uh, IRND filter, and this is the 0 0.3 strength. And you can kind of compare it to the, the shot that I got on the, with the CatVision filter uh, together with the hot mirror uh, infrared uh, filter. And as you can see, uh, it does a pretty good job. Now uh, I'm just going to go through all the different strengths. So here's the 0 0.6 uh, Tiffin uh, IRND filter, full, spe full spectrum. And this is the 0 0.9 ND uh, IR uh, filter from a Tiffin. Uh, comparing it again to the CatVision one. And here's the 1.5. Uh, so hopefully this test uh, uh, answered your questions with regards to just basically how effective this these uh, more affordable Tiffin IR ND filters are. Uh, again, like I said, you can get the ones that use the hot mirror te technology from Tiffin, but they're you know, really, really expensive. These ones, they're expensive, but they're not as expensive. Uh, they're you know, semi-affordable, $288 again per filter. But if you, you know, got a whole set like I have up here, uh, that can very quickly add up. So again, I think it might not be the best solution for somebody who's really on a, on a budget, like a, you know, an average indie filmmaker. And now let's say if you really just love using Tiffin filters and you don't want to go with any other brand, uh, then you can actually get uh, you know, a Tiffin filter that is just basically going to cut the IR you know, uh, light, uh, which basically means that then you would have to again use it in conjunction with any other regular ND filter. Uh, and quickly, I'm going to use this filter now uh, together with my different, you know, CatVision ND filters. And so you guys can kind of see, and this is again the shot with just the, the CatVision filter. And then here I'm going to put in the, the Tiffin uh, IR cutting filter. Now this one does not use the hot mirror technology. Uh, so here on the left side, uh, you can compare the, the shots basically that I got using the uh, regular CatVision filter and the CatVision uh, hot mirror uh, IR cutting filter. And again, I'm going to just cycle and go through all the different strengths so you can kind of compare and see how this Tiffin IR cutting filter uh, works uh, in, you know, when comparing it to the CatVision one. So 
So anyways, that, that's it for all these tests. Uh, hopefully, again, it helped answer any questions that you might have. For me, and I would say for any kind of you know indie filmmaker who's on a budget, uh, but that still wants to get good quality shots without you know IR pollution, I think the most affordable and best option is to go with these Cavision filters. Because again, one of these will cost you 60 to 80 bucks. Get the regular ones. If you don't mind basically having two pieces of glass or two filters in front of your, your camera, get the regular ones and then get one that will just simply cut out the IR uh, light and put that in front of your camera and that's it. Uh, and then the good thing is that in case you're shooting in some situation where you don't want to use an anti filter, but there still happens to be a lot of infrared light uh, pollution, which is, you know, it's going to be very rare that that will happen. But if that happens, then you can actually use just the IR cutting filter by itself. And I think having that option is good. And for me, it's not a problem using two filters uh, in front of the camera because I have a, you know, all of my matte boxes will basically uh, that I have have two stage filters, so you, I can put two filters in there. Um, now, if you're somebody who really wants to just use one filter, uh, then again, another option is to get the, the filters from Catvision, which use the the you know hot uh, mirror technology, and they're going to be. Uh, about a hundred dollars more expensive than the regular ones, but they will have the again the hat mirror filter built into it together with your ND filters. Uh, and once again, for the links, when you when you were to get these or all the other filters that I was showing you today, uh, uh, just look in the description of this video or go to my website at tomantosfilms.com. Uh, anyways, that's it uh, for this video. Thank you guys. Hope you hopefully you enjoyed it. And as always. Uh, go check out my website if you want to see any other t camera tests that I'm doing or filmmaking tutorials, that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll find all of that and a lot more on my website. Anyways, that's it guys.